Hi everybody, it's Caroline Strawson here, multi-award winning rapid transformational therapist specializing in narcissistic abuse, codependency and being an empath. Today what I want to talk to you about is codependency and being an empath because I'm getting lots and lots of messages at the moment asking, do, if you are codependent, does that mean you are an empath as well? And it doesn't. Everybody pretty much who I coach and I do therapy with who is trying to heal from narcissistic abuse, they are codependent, but not everybody is an empath. So what's the difference? So codependency is all about a lack of self-love. Another name for it is self-love deficit disorder. So as babies, as we come into the world, we look to our caregivers to instill in us a sense of self, self-love, self-belief, self-esteem but if for whatever reason they are incapable of doing that. Now that could be something major, but it equally it can be something minor because our parents or whoever looks after us in our childhood, they are the people that we absorb and we mirror who they are. So let me ask you this now, would you ever want to be exactly how your parents are? Because very often if you are a codependent, you will either have a narcissistic parent on one side and a codependent on the other. And that's normally how it will work. So this codependency comes from a complete lack of self during your childhood. And like I say, that can be something major or minor. Certainly from my perspective, my dad, he would say things like to me if I did gymnastics in the lounge, 9.99 recurring. You know, so I never felt good enough. Factor in looking at my mum, who was just this innate people pleaser all of the time, made me become this codependent because I didn't actually have a feeling of self instilled in me by my parents. Not because it was their fault, they did an amazing job with what they were capable of giving because of their childhoods, their upbringing, their subconscious programming. And being a codependent happened because I didn't feel like I was good enough. So I was looking for this external validation. So codependents will go through their lives seeking out other people to make them feel loved, to make them feel good enough because they don't feel it about themselves. So we're always looking for that relationship, which is why we become magnets to narcissists. We're always looking for this external validation, this people pleasing all of the time because we don't feel good enough in ourselves. We don't have that self-love, self-esteem or self-belief. We look to other people to show us. So we might try really, really hard and please everybody else in the hope that they would be really happy with us. Then all of a sudden that would give us a sense of self. But going around looking for that external validation all of the time is a recipe for disaster. Because what you are doing is you are picking up your happiness, putting it in somebody else's hands and saying, okay, regardless of what you went through, through your childhood, through your beliefs or anything else like that, I want you to make me feel good enough. That is not anybody's responsibility except yours. And this is where people sit in the blame mentality. They did this, they did that, and we don't feel good then and we're blaming other people. This is when we need to take back our own power and our own feelings of being good enough. This is what I do a lot when I do um, rapid transformational therapy on my clients because I help people go back to find out exactly how codependency was formed because it's meaning you've attached to events in your childhood. And when we go back, we can then see actually those meanings were incorrect because you were good enough. But because you're not receiving it from your parents, it's almost like if you imagine as a child, you want to get that great big cake of love off your parents. Now, if they're not capable of handing over that cake of love, so you feel worthy, you feel good enough, and they don't do that, as a child, you never think it's your parents' fault. You will always revert it back to you as a child. You don't have that cognitive ability to think that, actually, you know what, my mum and dad aren't showing me self-love or self-belief because of their own childhoods, and that's why they're not doing that. That, that's not the case. You as a child will always think, it must be me then, can't be them. So what you try and do then is you try and pluck 
crumbs. Well, you know what? If I can't have the cake, I will try and get crumbs. I will be the best that I possibly can. I'll be a super high achiever or I'll be really, really naughty. I just want to get noticed so that I feel good enough because I don't feel that in myself. And I call it a great big hole in your soul. So codependents will have this hole in their soul and they go out and they seek toxic relationships, maybe toxic friendships, and they are trying to find somebody to fill that hole in their soul, sometimes for the whole of their life. I want you to fill that hole in your soul because when you do that, you can be a recovering codependent then, full of self-love, self-respect, self-belief. Because ultimately, the most important words you will ever hear will be the words that you say to yourself. Not what your mum or your dad or your friend or your partner says to you. It might be nice, but ultimately, when you, when you really know and you really feel that you are good enough and you are worthy, you will heal yourself from codependency. And this is exactly what I do with my clients with the RTT, because it's really important to understand understand why are you codependent because sometimes you may be able to realize it you can look back at your childhood and think yes very very dysfunctional I can see why I have a complete lack of self sometimes certainly from my perspective I thought I had a great childhood and I still do feel like that but my parents ability to instill a sense of self in me just wasn't there so I had this complete lack of self which meant I attracted toxic friendships it meant I attracted toxic relationships so it was no surprise I ended up in a narcissistic marriage, which nearly broke me because I was suffering with PTSD, anxiety, depression, and self-harm. And it really nearly broke me, other than the fact I'd got two little people looking at me, and that's what got me through, which led me to my true purpose, which is helping people like you heal from narcissistic abuse, codependency, and being an empath. So that's codependency, just in a nutshell. What about being an empath? Well, there's a real difference between being an empath and being empathetic. So you might hear a sad story of somebody and you can be really empathic about it. You might think, gosh, that sounds really, really awful. I really you know, feel for this person. But when you finish the conversation, you can get up and you can walk away. You might still feel sorry for them, but it's not gonna be on your brain and you can walk away. Now, an empath, if an empath hears that same sad story, they will take on board that energy as if what they are telling you is happening to you. And it's happening, and you, when you walk away, you take all of that energy with you and you feel literally like it's happening to you. Now, I know I am an empowered empath, but I certainly know when I came out of my narcissistic marriage, you know, because I was a codependent and an empath, I was absorbing everybody's energy all of the time not feeling good enough. So you can imagine, it was a recipe for disaster because I felt so exhausted all of the time. Now, everything is energy. You know, the world is is, is energy, just like in quantum physics. Um, so I won't go too sciencey with you, even though you know I like my science. So I won't go too much into that, but we're all energy at the end of the day. So you imagine we absorb other people's energy, but if we're not practicing self-care for ourselves and creating really firm boundaries, then it's like, I always think of it like Harry Potter with the Dementors. It's like, <laughs> we have the life sucked out of us all of the time. And ultimately then, if we are then pouring from a half empty cup, how are we going to be able to self-care ourselves and if we have children? We just can't, we're exhausted. I don't watch the news. I am really, really rigid with my own boundaries and who I surround myself with because I know I can walk into a room and I can tell who's happy, who's sad. I can talk to somebody and they might have a smile on their face, but I can tell. I know if they are happy or sad. I know if something is wrong. So I absorb all of that. So I have to be really mindful that when I go, I ground myself. I have really clear boundaries with all of that. And I'm not gonna go into loads of detail about how you can set your boundaries, I'll do that in some other videos for you so you will be able to learn more with that too. So the difference between being a codependent is that feeling of not being good enough, that lack of self-love, that lack of self, the hole in the soul. Being an empath is somebody who absorbs energies. And again, that can be from people, it can be from animals, it can even be from innate objects because some people say they are an empath literally about in a object, so it can be about anything. But what's the difference? If you are codependent, does that mean you are an empath? No. Now, I am certainly a recovering codependent and I am an empath. But again, I see many people who are just codependents and they're not an empath. 
if you are a codependent and an empath, then you have to be really mindful. Because you imagine if you are with someone who is who is toxic and you want to show that you are good enough and you're absorbing their negative energies as well, my goodness, you really need to look after yourself like that. So you can definitely be a codependent and an empath and you can be a codependent on your own and an empath on your own. It doesn't mean that you have to be both, but if you are both, you must self-care. You must create really clear boundaries. And if you know you are a codependent and you know you are an empath, then please look at healing your codependency. Fill that hole in your soul. Know that you are good enough. Fill yourself with self-love, self-respect, self-belief self-confidence because when you do that and you're still an empath you can create much stronger boundaries because if you don't feel good enough your boundaries are very very weak factor in then being an empath then you are going to feel absolutely exhausted and this is many times where i see people who are suffering with stress related illnesses migraines gut issues adrenal fatigue so many things like that because of just draining all of the time being that codependent and being that empath so I hope that's really helped. Please like and subscribe on this video and click the bell because then you will see any other videos that I release as well. And if you want to come and join my Super Thriver Circle, which is my inner circle, my affordable membership for women to thrive after narcissistic abuse, you will see all of those links in the comments below. And I look forward to seeing you in my next video. See you soon.